Do you want to know the one tactic that you see every day on TV when you watch matches and it just goes right undetected, right under the radar? You don't even probably notice it and it's so subtle, but if you can master or at least start doing this one thing to your tennis game as you're playing matches, whether it be singles or doubles, you're going to start winning more points, games, and matches. And I'm going to share what that is right here. So the very first thing is I'm going to watch you play, watch, let you watch three different levels, meaning at the professional level, we're going to go down to the 4-5 level, and then the 3-0-3-5 level. And before we get started, I want to thank Tennis Tim for uh, uh, some video I'm using here, and I think it's Guardian Tennis, or Gruian Tennis, sorry. Uh, so the subtle thing is really, really important to notice because if you can start using this today, it'll make a dramatic difference in your game. Let's get started. So right here, we got golf and serving. I'm just gonna let the point play out. And this might seem like, hey, he's just being aggressive with his forehand. He's inside out and he missed the last ball. I don't really want you to pay attention to how he missed the last ball. I really want you to just keep in mind like what happened there. And on, I think, first glance, it's really easy to just kind of say, oh, well, he just served and he took control with his forehand. And that, for most players, will probably be the, the thing they take away. But if we go one step lower, you're gonna really pick up on something. Let's go to the next level. So we got uh, Nate and Tim here. I'm just gonna play it out. And I just want you to watch this. Good match here, They're you know, going side to side. This may be you out there. Okay, again, you watch that match and maybe the first thing that comes to mind is like, maybe there's a technical problem, you know, there's gotta be some technique in there that he could work on to, to prevent him from miss, missing that ball. And maybe there would be a technical thing, but that's not what I'm talking about. We're gonna watch one more level. Uh, and this is our final level being three or three, five. Serving. And you're probably watching this at home going, Kevin, what are you talking about? What, what is this thing that if I start doing today would really improve my game? And I'm going to show you right here, right now. And what that is, is how we manage time. So let me set this up really quick. And I want you to start as we go back through, pay attention to when the person is receiving the ball, how much they let the ball drop. And what that equates to me when I'm looking at it is how much time they're giving their opponent. And so, one thing that's so powerful in tennis is how you manage time. And most players think time, well, you know, what's time got to do anything? You know, I, I get to the ball in good time. Um, it's a huge thing. And that's what makes a huge difference between certain pros and a huge portion of amateurs is how they manage time. Time, I think, is more powerful than power. Yet most amateur players are focused on what? How can we hit the ball harder? How can I hit my forehand bigger? Well, if that was the case, well, basically, if you could hit the ball really, really hard, you'd probably be the best player in the world. That's not the case. There's another layer under that. So as we watch, what I want you to look at is, boom, the ball's coming uh, right here. And look how we're waiting, we're waiting, and the ball's starting to drop into the strike zone. And as we go up in level, you see this difference when you watch players play. Meaning that as we watch this point, that's the peak of the ball right there. And it's starting to drop, 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 drop. Not dramatic, but there's still some dropping. Now, if we go back to our original clip right here and watch this, you can already see that he's in position in the return to take the ball on the way up, probably before it even gets to the top of the, the bounce. And that positioning has pushed him inside the court. Now, the question is, What's his next reply? The ball's short, and Goffin on the other side is going to take the ball. And you can see here, it's coming up into a strike zone. Boom, probably at the top of the peak of the bounce, he's taking the ball and redirecting it which took time away. Also, I will give credit that, you know, his return was in the middle of the court, but you see this thing happen over and over again. And so right here, Goffman's moving into position and notice that the ball hasn't bounced yet. It's still in the air. And so if you watch after the bounce, the ball's on the way up and boom, he's taking more time away and he'll miss a shot. And that's not really what I'm, I'm focused on now, but the potential of taking a little bit of time over and over away from your opponent is huge. So what do we need to do, Kevin? How do we need to incorporate this in this, your game? Well, start off by learning 
how to look for the opportunities to take more time away, which means when you're warming up, instead of standing on or behind the baseline for every ball and you let the ball kind of play you, meaning the ball comes up and then comes down and you hit it wherever the ball kind of winds up with your position, you start playing the ball, meaning that you move up to the ball to take it at the top of the bounce. This is going to feel very uncomfortable in the beginning because you're like, you're, ah, I'm taking time away from myself. I need that extra time to hit the ball. But on the flip side is when you do take that time away from yourself, you also take that time away from your opponent. And that's so powerful because your opponent wants that time. And another level of it, <laughs> no pun intended, is so powerful because by taking time away, it makes your ball seem like it's coming quicker without actually having to hit it harder. This is where you see a lot of opponents that might be a little smaller or not as physically big, even like Fetter, where he's not the biggest guy out there, but he's really good at taking time away when he has the opportunity. Now, this doesn't mean you don't play defense because you might be hearing me as like, Kevin, do it, does that mean I need to take every ball early? No. When the opportunity presents itself and you can be aggressive and play offense, now you can start looking to take time away from your opponent. Some other ways of taking time away from your opponent is moving in and taking the ball out of the air. This may mean a swing volley. Maybe you move, you know, three, four feet inside the baseline and you take a ball out of the air. That's a great way of taking the ball early. Also, by taking the ball out of there, moving forward to net. If you're closer to the net than your opponent and you hit a volley, even if the quality of that volley isn't great, if it's just a solid normal volley and you have the opportunity to run them to the open court or go behind them, they may not have the time to hit the ball, which creates more mistakes. So you can see here, when you start watching matches, especially at the highest level, you're going to start noticing like, whoa, everyone's trying to take time away from each other. It's not about necessarily hitting every ball really hard. It's about taking those opportunities to take more time away from your opponent, not giving them time to hit the ball. And at the lower end, you start seeing how everybody's just giving time back to their opponent to hit shots. And so if you can start incorporating, taking more time away from your opponent when you have the opportunity, you're going to start seeing them make more mistakes without you having to hit the ball harder. So. Leave me a comment below or any questions you have because I would love to know how you're going to start taking time away from your opponent. And I'd also love to hear what are the results of that. Maybe it does feel a little uncomfortable in the beginning, but the, the long-term result of you learning how to handle that and seeing that is huge. And I want you to also start taking a new look at, have a new lens when you watch college players, when you watch uh, tennis on TV, because you're going to see this happen over and over again. And you're going to realize like, whoa, I totally missed that. I totally didn't see that because maybe you're super tech technical focused. Your technique doesn't have to be perfect to take away time. It's a mindset and learn to anticipate and see the ball to do it.